many times we we don't um, stop and think about the choices we make in our lives and the, the, the big ramifications of them. Kelsey Tillett and Jackie Floto are courageous. When the sexual abuse scandal involving Mervyn Budram came to light last week Thursday, both women stepped up and shared with us their unfortunate experiences allegedly at the hands of the worship leader. They were candid about what happened for the sole purpose of encouraging other victims to seek help and healing. According to Floto, the incident took place at a time when Budram did not hold any official capacity in the church. On the other hand, the allegations that Tillit have brought against Budram are fairly recent. Notwithstanding the time span, Tillit and Floto both stated that Budram was a close and trusted friend. I came to Bangapan in my early teens, like between the ages of 13 to 14. Became very involved with the church, quickly um, became a part of legacy and everything that's under that banner. And Mervyn became like a father figure to me. He was very, very close to me and my family. Um, I had high respect for him. He was like a father figure to me. He was someone that I looked up to so highly. I wanted to be like him. I wanted to be around him. Mervyn and I were friends. We had met through church events, not a specific church. It was actually YWAM. He was living um, in Dangriga at the time. So, I mean, this was, at this time, he was still, I mean, we're closer together in age. I was 16. So he was maybe 18 or 19. So, um, we were we were good friends. Uh, this was someone who I had trusted. We had a very close relationship. Um, it was just it was somebody who I trusted. It was someone you know, it's kind of like older brother. And I. I cared about Mervyn very much. I looked up to Mervyn. Both women also told us that they were going through rough patches at the time and were vulnerable. Budram allegedly seized the opportunity to prey on their helplessness. I thought to myself that I, I feel safe, that I have someone that, um, that I could talk to. I was going through a lot with school, with um, my parents' separation, with um, friends, family, there was a lot going on, so I felt like Mervyn was one of the few leaders and people in my life that no matter what, I could turn to. And that these drives were our little safe space to just connect as like a spiritual father and daughter. The discussions that we had had, you know, we had prayed together. And we had specifically talked about not wanting to have those those types of relationships. I was in a very dysfunctional family, so it was not wanting to be that kind of a girl, not wanting to have that, and some of the things that I was struggling with personally, and some of the things that, you know, just my family struggles at that time, and my personal struggles, and these things, like, we had prayed about, you know, some of these things, these were things that he knew that I did not specifically knew that I didn't want, but also that I was in a very vulnerable place with them. According to Tillit and Floto, they did not speak out immediately after their alleged encounter because they feared that they would not be believed. I was fairly new to Bangapan. Um, those that know me know I grew up in Belize City. Um, I came to Bangapan when, you know, I was in high school. I was with my parents who were split, so I was in between Belize City and here. I came to Bopan and quickly found out who were the quote-unquote popular people, who were the Bopan veterans, who were the people that everyone loved, everyone praised, everyone talked about. That's in the church. In the church, yes. <laughs> um, and I realized Mervyn was one of them. Um, and I, I quickly realized after the situation that happened, it would be my word against his. And I really didn't think that my word would carry any weight. I didn't think anyone would believe me. It was a friend of mine, it was someone who I trusted. And so I think that it immediately, it was trying to just get my brain around, you know, what had happened. And then also feeling like I could not 
tell anyone because they would not believe me. And I think that that, to me at that time, was a very real thing, like that I wouldn't be believed. Um, I regret that very much now. I don't necessarily think that that was true. The women shared that while the church has a responsibility to act in support of sexual abuse victims, these public statements are not meant to attack the institution, but rather to shed light on inappropriate encounters that have been kept in the dark for years. Reporting for News 5, I am Paul Opus.